All right, I know that we're going to have some people join us along the way, and we are recording this for later. So we're going to go ahead with it, regardless of who's here and who's not. My name is Hanson Hossein. I am the co-founder of the Communication Leadership Master's Program here at the University of Washington. And I'm actually coming to you live from the University of Washington from my office on campus, um, which I thought is unique because the campus technically is still largely closed, but we expect it to be open by this fall. And I thought it'd be nice, just a nice touch just to have that connection to this incredible university that I've been a part of for, for so long. And uh, I'm here today to give you an overview uh, and answer your questions about this new certificate that we're launching, which is in leadership and emerging technologies and trends. It's a unique learning opportunity, and it's clearly a timely um, an urgent um, moment for us to be able to focus on what the things that we're gonna be talking about today. So over the next hour, I'm gonna to go to on camera so you can see me and just turn this off. So I'm gonna stop this here. So over the next hour, um, we're gonna explain more of the what and the why and the how to this four credit certificate program. And then we'll take as many of your questions as you have for us. And so we expect the first presentation part to take around 20 minutes and so we'll go through uh, what's what why we created this program and the classes and you'll hear from my colleagues and co faculty who created this and then we will take your questions and before we get started i'd like to introduce you to my co presenters my co instructors and my co architects of the certificate dr nika kabiri and dr sarah loman uh, nika i'll start with you and i'm going to ask the same question of, of sarah as well why did you feel compelled to join me on this unique journey to create this four credit certificate in leadership at this time, given all the things that you care about and all that you do and the expertise that you bring to the table. Right. Well, first, the opportunity to build a certificate program with you, Hanson, was too good to pass up and to work with Sarah. Um, but also, I think there are a lot of issues in um, in technology, in, in business and technology that um, people in it don't really think about very much or think about enough and don't, and there are a lot of questions that aren't asked. Um, and I think that things move so rapidly that, um, that it's time we take a, take a breath and slow down and, and really kind of think about them. So my background is actually in um, the field of sociology. I got my PhD at the University of Washington in sociology where I specialized in institutional analysis and rational choice theory. Um, and after that, I went on to work in the last, for the last, I don't know, 12 or so years in business, in um, doing consumer insights, trying to understand why people make the decisions they do when they buy different products and, and things like that. And as I did that, I started to realize that um, a lot of businesses are really making some serious choices that have implications on how people consume technology. Um, and they don't really quite think through those choices. They just, you know, they're trying to grow the bottom line um, and, you know, grow the, the tech and, you know, build, you know, build and progress and all of those words that, you know, that really think about, they're, they're all about moving forward. Um, but sometimes there isn't enough thought about where they're going. And so now I'm, you know, with conversations with Hanson just kind of became more and more apparent to me that this is a really great opportunity to marry my interest in, you know, making the right choices that are ethical and sound and also for the greater good without compromising, um, you know, business growth um, in the field of technology where things are just so uncertain a lot of times and moving so rapidly. So that's my story. Well, that's a great story and I, and I, and I appreciate and I'm grateful for your willing to join me on this unique journey. So thanks for that. Sarah, how about you? What, what compelled you to, 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 to make the leap? Thanks, Hanson. And I will second Nika's opinion that one of the best things about being on faculty at uh, UW is just the wonderful uh, faculty that we get to brainstorm with. So it's been a real pleasure brainstorming with both of you over the last couple of years around this certificate. Um, what drew me to the ComLead program first, and I wanna just start there briefly because the first thing that drew me to ComLead was the core tenets. So they were up there on the homepage. And, and these really um, are tenants that talk about um, how do we use technology ethically and equitably? And this is something that I wanted to really incorporate into everything I was doing. So I'm an innovator. I've helped to create things in technology. And 
Uh, I'm also a researcher, so uh, I work in the area of emerging tech, of big data, um, and of cybersecurity. And so being able to say from beginning to end, we have these core tenets, we have this ethical core that we want to follow, um, was very appealing to me. And then we sat down and we tried to put that on paper and say, how um, can we ensure that the next generation that's coming up, the, the, the students that are already out there in their professions even, um, are able to advocate for these emerging technologies in a way that is eth ethical and that is um, building up community, that is advocating in a way uh, that is not running people over, but also helping the vulnerable. Um, helping the people that have been sidelined by society. And so as a creator, but also as somebody, as a user, I wanted to make sure that um, all of our students were also able to be part of that ethical core process. Well, you know, I'm sorry, that's really music to my ears that you were drawn to those tenets. That's part of the Conley Declaration of Communication Leadership that we created a couple of years ago. And I'll, you'll hear a bit more about that because that actually is the foundational assignment to the first class that students have to create some kind of declaration of principles, ethics, and values for an organization of their choice. It could be the organization or just one that's meaningful to them. And so to see how that actually translates into leadership and communication around change is interesting. So we'll definitely get into that. So thank you both for sharing that. I'm not going to share my screen and get into a little bit of the show and tell of the certificate before we come to your questions. So just a bit more about the motivation. This is something that has been on my mind for at least the last two or three years. I've, I've had conversations with leaders at uh, tech companies. I've convened major conversations around this. And uh, the pandemic has only accelerated the things that we really had to be concerned about or we, we wanted to lead differently about. And this quote that I have here from Peggy Noonan, who's an op-ed writer at the Wall Street Journal, she put this up a few months ago, in reflection of as we come out of the pandemic, what that means that what organizations are going to have to do and think and act differently, given the accelerated change that has happened over the last year and a half. Yes, it requires data. Yes, it requires some real thoughtful operational methodology. But what is what I really love most is that she's advocating that we have to be really creative. We have to think like an artist because there are no textbook answers to where we are now and what will be happening over the next few years. And that is my intention and has been my intention in creating this new curriculum for the graduate program as well as the certificate is that how can we think differently and behave differently and communicate differently as leaders around some very core decisions that have to be made now during this actually narrow window of time. And so that's why we created this certificate in collaboration with Continuing College, which is the profession in, professional continuing education arm of the University of Washington. And as you can see, we will be focused on these particular learning objectives. And the, the, the vision always had been that there is a three-stage approach to this. First of all, we have to get literate in what the technologies and trends are that we're facing. You know, what is happening on a second by second basis that leaders now are compelled to either make decisions about or communicate almost in immediately. And so to understand that, how to read those trends and how to respond to them is the first class. Then the second class where we move to NECA and ethical decision-making is like, once you're aware and understand what's at stake, how do you make decisions on behalf of your organization to actually to rise and, and meet that moment? And once you've made those decisions, whether it's about adoption of a technology or response to a trend or making some kind of change within your organization, then you need to be able to credibly and authentically communicate that to all the stakeholders and not just your employees, but people that you do business with, people who are your vendors, um, people who actually care about the organization, people who live in your community. And that's what Sarah's course is about, is about the storytelling element. So that's the that was the vision for the program. You can see it's a three course start, uh, cycle. It starts this fall with my class, which is only two credits. And then it moves into Nika's class in the winter, which you'll hear about, and then spring with Sarah's class. But those are both five credits. And it's a 12 credit graduate four credit program. And I'll tell you a bit more about what that means and, and, and what you get out of that but through that unique approach. So just to um, quickly get into the class that I will be teaching and that I piloted this spring, actually, uh, the two credit course, which is Leadership in Emerging Technologies and Trends, which is very much the foundational class to to the program is just basically understanding when we say emerging technologies and trends, why does that matter and, and, and why now? 
And, and the, the primary work that we do in this class is to create that, as I mentioned, that declaration, that, that almost like a, a, it's almost like a constitution, it could be a template, but it's essentially some way to signal to the stakeholders of an organization, this is what we care most about right now, and here they are. And so that if you need to make a decision on behalf of the organization or communicate on behalf of the organization, and the ultimate leader, the CEO, or whoever the director is not in the room, what, what can you do, what can you say in alignment with what matters most to that organization that responds to this moment? And so on a day, uh, during this class, we really do discuss what those emerging technologies are. We also go through some of the headlines of the week, which are coming at us so quick and fast and furious. And so even as an example, over the last few weeks, the things that we've discussed, which you might not think are pertinent, but are, uh, Naomi Osaka's decision to withdraw from the French Open because of mental health. That has interesting uh, ramifications in terms of mental health becoming a critical, critical mass conversation. The aging Chinese population and the fact that they're now allowing a third child, that has consequences in terms of technology adoption and comfort with that technology if there's not enough people to care for those people. Um, Google and employees within Google taking on the issue of the war that's happening uh, among the Palestinians and the Israelis around the Gaza Strip. Um, the need for vaccine passports in terms of technology that's associated with that and, and, and privacy. COVID-19 in India, in terms of what that means with regards to how that, that country responds, the use of medication, and even the consequences in other countries around that. And then even the European Union, where Sarah is coming to us from today, she's in Germany, uh, deciding to start to regulate artificial intelligence, even when there's no regulation whatsoever in America, and the consequences of that. So those are some of the conversations that we have in the class on a regular basis. We look at what that means from a leadership and a communication point of view. And then at the same time, we have this work that the students are focused on in choosing an organization that's meaningful to them to create this declaration. And so uh, our students did amazing work this last quarter. I just wanted to show you a little bit of sample of, of, of that. Um, one of our students actually works for this company, which is an insurance company in our part of the world. And this is the preamble. Uh, so all of the students had to create sort of this introduction of explaining what's going on right now that requires them to go into these core tenants. And so with Symmetra looking very much at thinking about how financial tools are changing, how financial technology is actually creating new opportunities and new challenges around that. And also thinking about, you know, what is fair and equitable given everything that we've faced over the last year and a half. It's not just COVID-19, but all the other social upheaval that has occurred that has forced organizations and leaders to think and act differently very quickly. And so with this particular work that this student did, she really, focused on financial freedom and this idea of fairness and then moving into these ideas her tenants around transparency technology focus on employees and community as well as equity uh, and so really the at the forefront of everything we're talking about right now another example is seattle children's hospital which is one of the foremost um, children's hospitals in the country having some unique challenges over this last year um, and this particular student decided to focus on, yeah, there's an incredible tradition here, but knowing that the pandemic focused this new approach on technology and health, as well as the inequitable distribution of access to those services, especially among marginalized communities, that this particular institution needed to think and do differently around that. And taking into account everything we discussed in the, in the course, from artificial intelligence to remote access to telehealth, to um, which communities were most suffering from COVID-19, this particular student was able to put together a really comprehensive declaration around that and it allowed her also to, to learn more about these issues and now feels much more literate in, in that. And so that's the foundational approach to this first course to understanding what is this world we're in right now and how do we start to actually put a, a, a basically a line in the sand for our organization in terms of the decisions and how we'll communicate around that. So once we do that, then we move on to the second class in the winter with Nika around you know, the ethics and the decision-making process that goes into, well, we understand what's going on now. How do, we, how do we, on behalf of our organization, make those decisions? So with that, Nika, perhaps you can say a few words about your class. 
Yeah, so I think the best way to introduce my class is to tell a story. I don't know how true it is, but it's a really good story. Um, it takes place in ancient China. It's after the Great Wall's been built. It's before the Industrial Revolution. It's way before all of that. Um, and the emperor had a chief engineer that came to him with this really amazing contraption. And the engineer, um, and the emperor asked the engineer, well, what is, what is this new invention? And the engineer said, well, this is a flying machine. And the emperor thought, well, what does that mean, a flying machine? Only birds can fly. And the engineer said, no, actually, now men can fly. So he spent you know, the next, I don't know, hour or two demonstrating this contraption. He flew around a little bit, and he was really showing off his really amazing invention. And the whole time, the emperor thought, wow, this is pretty, pretty fascinating. And he was telling the engineer, you know, this is really great work, and this is real progress. This is kind of amazing. Um, you know, thank you very much for showing me this. So the engineer very happily leaves and the emperor turns to his right-hand man and says, um, you know, you should go and execute that engineer. And so he does, he, he, um, he kills him. And when he was asked, well, why did you make that order? Why, you know, why emperor did you decide to, to kill this man with this great kind of ingenuity who could come up with a, a machine that so all of us could fly? He said, well, if, if a machine like this gets around, then people could fly over the wall and all of us would be in a lot of danger. So it was a very kind of a huge decision. Again, I don't know how true it is, but it does kind of tell, it makes you think a little bit about how we rush into maybe some inventions and innovations that may not be in the best interests of all of us. But then on the other hand, there are many innovations that could help us quite a bit. And air travel has actually obviously done quite a great um, bit of good as far as bringing people together and communities together. But anyway, was the emperor's decision the right decision? Fast forward to um, our current era um, after the Russian hacks in the um, 2016 election or um, you know, after Donald Trump has tweeted his thousand tweet and Jack Dorsey is doing an interview with the New York Times where he says, you know, I really wish that when we started Twitter, when I started Twitter, that we really thought we, we I wish we had employed sociologists. I wish we had employed behavioral economists. I wish we had employed people who really understood decision-making in communication so that we could have avoided a lot of the problems that we have now. Um, so, the crux of this course is in the field of communications where you have all this new technology that facilitates great communication, but also facilitates a lot of misinformation or enables a lot of misinformation. What decisions must technology leaders make in order to ensure fair um, sharing of information, accuracy in that share of inf sharing of information um, and, and anything that's related to that? What are the ethical considerations around all of that? So what you'll learn in this class are some basic behavioral, we'll start with some basic behavioral and social science principles that frame decision-making or the study of decision-making. So we'll talk about heuristics and biases. We'll look into a little bit of game theory. We'll talk about the influence of social networks, which is not just social media networks, but the influence of people that you interact with and how that influences your decision making as a communicator and the impact of that on how communications platforms should be making decisions. And also institutional constraints like um, either cultural and normative constraints, but also institutions, including businesses and how all those institutions by, and what I mean by constraint, constrain the choices that we have, constrain our option sets and also constrain the way that we see the, the pros and cons of all of our options. So some basic fundamental decision science will start off the class. And then we'll look at some applications of that as we look into social media platforms, um, how to employ the right decision making as, um, as users and as um, um, creators of these platforms and how to make clear and ethical decisions around the deployment and adoption of all these new technology solutions, whether you're inside of an organization that's using them or you're at an organization that's creating them. And that's basically it in a nutshell.
That's great, Nika. Thanks for that. I mean, it's such a brilliant class, and I think I need to take it as well. And when I originally brought this idea of the certificate to the University of Washington, and as they were looking about what what the curricular needs were, this focus on the ethics, they said that is that's what's really missing. And we really want to showcase that. So this is one of the reasons why they gave the green light for the certificate in the first place is that there was a feeling that this stuff was coming at us fast and furious, but nobody was really thinking about it. So I, I love that Twitter anecdote as well. So I appreciate that. Uh, and so now we move to, to Sarah with the third class and really at the heart of our graduate program is storytelling, trust and credibility. So it's great that Sarah, you know, bats clean up for us if you want a baseball analogy in terms of bringing us home and thinking about how do we, you know, we, we understand what's going on. We've made decisions ethically as Nika has showed us how to do. Now, how do we communicate this appropriately to our constituents and stakeholders? And with that, Sarah. Thank you, Hanson. And I loved your stories, Nika. Um, that's a great illustration of how to do this. This is really, um, so the pilot version of this class was, I have to honestly say, the most fun class I've taught at the University of Washington. Um, and we are going to really do a deep dive into the nuts and bolts of the Internet of Things, big data, um, cloud, and AI in a first step. So we really get into these technologies and then because only by really understanding the technologies can we effectively communicate about them. Um, and then once we've done that in a first step, we learn about applying the con lead core tenets. Those are um, such as technology and community and um, thinking about how we can ethically create and advocate and regulate around those technologies. So we're addressing topics like um, what are the ethics of effective advocacy and how is propaganda different than storytelling? Um, how do we most effectively champion emerging technologies to our clients, but also just in our environment of influence? Um, and we talk about widening the net beyond our traditional clients. So we look at how this emerging technology impacts society and specifically the vulnerable and those without equitable access. The uh, reading for the course, which uh, we got great feedback on, was Tools and Weapons by Brad Smith. We have a number of other readings as well, but that is the main uh, book. And there's basically one big project around this uh, class, and that's basically um, an assignment that consists of you choosing a uh, an emerging technology, it can be one of the four I mentioned, so it could be the Internet of Things, cloud, big data, or AI, or another one approved um, in advance, and then we're going to break that into two parts. We're going to look at advocating for emerging technologies in one presentation and the impact of emerging technologies in another so basically you take that emerging technology that you've decided to do a deep dive into, into the um, ex the entire uh, course over the quarter, and you um, look at using storytelling that inspires, informing us how your form of emerging technology is broadening that stakeholder net, and then applying the ethics lessons we've learned in both your design and your presentation. And then the second part of the project is looking at the impact of emerging technologies. And this is where your personal experience really comes to play. So a lot of you are working in all different fields and you're looking at how that emerging technology is making an impact in the field where you're working. You could also be looking at how it's making an impact on cybersecurity or on digital diplomacy, or if you're working in marketing, let's say for example, or if you are um, a communications project lead, whatever your specific career field is, you're going to integrate it where you are. So as part of that presentation, you're making sure to include, again, those tenants and um, looking at how emerging tech has actually benefited communities, how it's built trust, how it's increased equity, and how it's respected civil liberties. So those are just a few of the things we're looking at in the course. I really hope that you're able to join the certificate, and I've really enjoyed brainstorming about this with both Hansen and Nika. Over to you, Hansen. Thank you, Sarah. That's wonderful. I love the 
both the dynamic nature of this class, given the, obviously these technologies are changing right now all the time, but also the rigor that you bring to the table and obviously your experience as well, your deep one experience. And so thank you for teaching this. And, and it's, it's music to my ears that this is one of the favorite teaching experiences you've had when you taught this class in the past. And I think within the, within the realm of the certificate, it's gonna make it even more meaningful because students will have gone through this three cycle course and come to you finally, and it would all make sense to them. So that's great. So a few more things before we take your questions, just um, a little bit more on the practicalities of the of a certificate program. So you can see who, who this is designed for, just listening to both Nika and Sarah in terms of, you know, we're looking for people who've got some experience in organizations who are professionals who may have some deeper questions about the decisions they are being called upon to make right now or think as they make that next step as leaders in the organizations they, they will be called upon and want to do so both uh, with some knowledge but also frankly with some uh, ethical backbone to them and so that's really important and that's how we're positioning this and what's unique about this this is the first certificate that we've created that is for credit and that means that you will earn 12 graduate school from credits from the University of Washington that you can apply to any, if you decide, you can just say, that's good enough for me, I've got this graduate school certificate, or you say, you know what, I really like this, I want to get now a graduate degree, it could be a communication leadership graduate degree, and so if you decide then next to apply into our program, you would have already fulfilled 12 credits out of the required credits that are for, for achieving one of our degrees, or you can apply somewhere else. And so that is the idea that you can then, um, you, it's not automatic, you don't get automatic acceptance to a graduate program, but you can then use this education and this credential to get further into a graduate degree, including ours afterwards. And there are some technicalities that are involved in that. And obviously we are kicking this off as a pilot program this fall, um, it will begin with my class in October, and we're accepting applications on a rolling basis uh, through August 15th. Um, just so you know, the way that we're approaching this is that these classes exist within the Communication Leadership Master's Program now, and there are students who are signing up for this class. In fact, my class is full already for the fall, but we're creating a certain amount of seats just for certificate students. And it's going to be small and exclusive. So we're looking for three to five students right now to sit alongside our current graduate students in this program for this fall. And we will grow it out after that, but this is us, our, our chance to launch it during this unique time with a handful of you that we think will be great collaborators and bringing your expertise to the conversations we have in the class. So to apply, um, it's as we would for any kind of um, graduate studies, if you're not uh, a graduate non matriculate student, that you have to write a two quick letter to us, 250 words that explains who you are, your experience, and why you think this is good for you. Share your resume as well as your transcripts and then submit the application. And after you have applied, you'll be emailing that email address. And it's also on the website for this program just to, to, to alert them to this. So again, we're starting this really small. My class will only have maybe up to about 20 students in it. And that includes certificate students sitting alongside my our graduate students. And they're very dynamic conversations. Every week I'm bringing in a top leader in the field, whether it's in technology or CEO of an organization. Uh, this quarter we brought in the CEO of um, the Lincoln Center. We brought in a former president of Intellectual Ventures and a VC investor. We brought in some really amazing speakers um, and you get to engage with them in a very intimate setting as you're learning and applying your knowledge to whatever you're doing right now. So those are the practicalities. Uh, you've heard from Nika and Sarah. Uh, we would be happy to take your questions. I'm not quite sure whether we're taking them as on camera and on. I don't think so. I think we're either taking text questions or um audio questions simone what's what's our or liao what's our approach to a question i should have asked this beforehand oh i don't think i'm hearing from everybody i'm going to stop the screen screen change the, my screen share anyway here all right well, well perhaps um we are still recording and one of the reasons we we wanted you to take your cameras off is because we'd like to share this later and we didn't want we wanted to respect your privacy so um we'd be happy to i can either take your questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself or, and ask a question directly of us
and I see some names that I recognize, which is even better. Oh, I see. Feel free to send text questions or audio questions. That's in the chat box. Well, while we're waiting, Simone, if you're still with us, Simone is actually producing this conversation today, and she was a student in my class this quarter. Um, Simone, if you're still with us, do you want to quickly share what your experience was like in terms of some of the things we've discussed today? Yes, I can. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Simone. Um, I'll just keep my video off in case we have to go edit, do whatever, so I'll just keep it off. Um, but I was in Emerging Technologies um, this last spring. Oh, man, it's already spring. This last spring quarter. Um, and it was one of the most engaging and important classes I think that I will take and that I have ever taken at Calm Lead. Um, the speakers came from so many different backgrounds and every week it just had like a guided flow that really led up to our final discussion and our final project of um, picking, our org picking an organization and like diving deep into their values and missions and um, how we need to look at the technology that each of them is adapting and just like how everything fits together so perfectly with it, whether it's ethics or just like making sure that data is properly um, taken into account and all of that good stuff. So it was really, really interesting and really worthwhile to hear the perspective um, and just learn more in general about AI and communication or about like we had the Lincoln Center, like Henry Timms and Adrian Brown, like these incredible people and how they utilize technology in their professional lives um, and just the importance of it in general. That's great. Thanks for that. In terms of what you learned from either of the most sort of startling emerging technology or emerging trend that you hadn't really known about before you took the class, Simone, which one, what, do you remember what resonated most? You were focused, obviously, on an organization that does student travel abroad that had been seriously affected by the pandemic. Yeah, I think that one of the most eye-opening things for me was just like the broad use of AI and how AI is soon going to be available and is available to like anybody and just the black box technology behind it and the problems and data sets and all of that was really eye-opening. I just had no idea how widely accessible AI was and how it was going to be used in the future. That's great. Thanks for that, Simone. And we're still waiting for any questions you have, but if I don't see questions, I'll, I'll keep ask, I'll ask questions. Oh, I see one from Amy. Would you say this program is geared more towards folks in private industry or is it also applicable to folks working with public or nonprofit institutions? Thanks for that question, Amy. And the answer is it is absolutely uh, across the board, across sector. Um, in fact, many of the organizations we had guest speakers from or the organizations that our students focused on were not for profit or civic organizations. This challenge that we're in right now with regards to technologies and trends just really transcends any kind of entity. It really even communities have to be have to have to have to contend with decisions they need to make about adoption of AI tools right now because it's so prevalent and so accessible. You heard Simone talk about black boxes. Anybody can adopt an AI service right now and it's almost free. It's almost like, you know, what we did 20 years ago in taking Word and using that as a word processing software. And so to me, in fact, nonprofit organizations um, uh, or for purpose organizations have a greater obligation to understand this sooner than later because it has some real uh, implications in terms of uh, both the ethics and the culture of what matters most to those kinds of entities, because the motive is not just profit. In fact, it's not profit at all. It's actually creating some kind of change. And you want to make sure you're doing that change in a meaningful, ethical way from the outset. And it's very tempting to use these technologies without really thinking about it because they're offered for free or maybe it brings some kind of efficiency, but you haven't really thought through how it might be affecting some of the stakeholders in your organization. And so, no, it is not just for people in private industry. It's, it's well beyond that. And maybe uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah had her hand up, so I think you're going to respond either to that directly or just reflect a bit more on what we discussed so far. Yeah, thanks. Um, I just wanted to mention that in the pilot version of, of my class for this, the majority of those students taking the emerging tech class um, that I taught were um, public or nonprofit institutions. We did have a couple that were in private industry, but the majority were otherwise, and they did their project, um, you know, applying these concepts to where they are in their career and their career focus. And so that meant they were applying it to public or nonprofit institutions because those were places 
where we were see seeking to expand equity, where we were seeking to build up community as we were advocating for these emerging technologies and ensuring that there was equal access to them. Yeah, I just would like to add, I think that um, my explanation of my course might have made it sound like that my course would be only for people who are engaged in business, only people who are trying to balance, you know, the bottom line against ethical decision making. Um, I think a lot of nonprofits have their own bottom line, they have their own um, goals and objectives, and they need to employ emerging, emerging technologies to do whatever it is they want to do. And they need to do that ethically as well and make the right decisions. So whatever you learn in even my class, even though my background is in business, um, will be absolutely useful to you either way. And there, there will be a sensitivity to both. Great. Thank you very much, both Nick and Sarah, for responding. And the questions are coming through, which is great. Um, uh, from Amy, uh, the content of the certificate sounds fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. We appreciate that. I'm interested in the master's, but this seems like a great place to start. Do I need to apply for the master's first? Or what would be the best process path to apply for the certificate? Also, we'd be sharing the slides and recording. Yes, we'll be sharing the slides and recording. And I think you'll even be getting this directly from the university because you did sign up for this. So yes, you'll get that. Um, in terms of your decision-making around the master's with the certificate, my uh, I used to be the director of this program. And my attitude had always been that we want to make our, the things that we do and specialize as accessible to people in where they are in their lives. And so the master's program was always the, the, the least accessible because it required you to be physically there as well as commit to a great deal of education over a period of time. But it obviously gave you an amazing credential and incredible access to our community and opportunities. But we also wanted to provide lighter, uh, lighter, acts, uh, you know, lighter loads that gave you a taste of what we did that might be enough or might say incentivize you to do more. And so this is a great opportunity for you to come in um, and the work you do gets recognized officially by the university, can lead to the masters afterwards, but, um, but also might be sufficient in itself for you while giving you a highly relevant education for the time that we're in right now. And so my advice to you is that if you're, I mean, we've gone through the the uh, application process for the masters and we're pretty much done with it. I think there might be one last round that's finishing up on July 1st. So this might be your opportunity to, to put your toes in the water and try us out. And then you can make a decision whether you want to pursue the masters after and you'd have to apply to that separately. And so my advice to you would probably just to apply now to the certificate. Um, it's a much lighter application as well. It only requires a short essay as you saw, plus your transcripts. Um, and uh, and a resume, while the master's application is much bigger, uh, requires a, a video application, a letter of intent, letters of reference, and a few other things. And so this is the best way for you to come into it. Um, so, uh, and I, we'd be happy to answer any questions. You can, I'll put my email address in where, as well as if you have these specific questions about the application. So apply for the certificate first is my advice. Um, from Paige, hi Paige, uh, will you be including any discussion evaluation of AR and VR? So here's, first of all, I we, we, in my class, we definitely um, do, we don't discuss it, we didn't discuss it robustly, but it came up quite a bit. In fact, one of our students used Alibaba as her meaningful organization and definitely went into AR as and VR as a component of how they need to handle the future of retail sooner than later. Um, I think AR and VR has finally hit critical mass and we're going to see a lot of developments over the next six to nine months. It looks like Apple will be finally introducing their AR device next year and Facebook has clearly made some incredible inroads. Um, and I have some colleagues who work at Facebook right now at VR labs, including some of our alumni who will be involved in the next iteration of this class. And so to me, this is something that requires robust conversation. I don't know if Sarah, did you discuss a, you obviously you mentioned the four technologies that you're focusing on, but I'm sure that you are open to anybody who wants to explore something specific that's not on that short list of yours. Yeah, so those were the kind of the four where we did a deep dive where I did intensive presentations just on those so that people could understand the building blocks of, of some of the emerging technologies. We did do uh, VR and we had one student that uh, spent a lot of time looking at this particularly and looking at how it was even helping during the um, pandemic, um, you know, for those who'd had depression and things like that. Um, and, and looking at how it's developing now and going into the future. And obviously AR is linked to that intimately as well. So we did do, um, I don't want to say an entire unit on it, but we did touch on it. Yeah. 
Great, thanks. Nick, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit on this AR VR thing. And I, and I don't expect you to be particularly an expert in the technology, but I know that even when our student brought it up for her client, Alibaba, I did push her to really think about the ethical elements of AR and VR because there is, thoughts about what is the data and surveillance and things like that. And so if you have a student who wants to explore AR and VR and the implementation from a decision-making point of view in your class, what would be your top line advice in terms of thinking about that particular technology? Yeah, so um, first of all, I think my, my course will probably cover AI and machine learning a little bit more than AR and VR, but under undergirding all of these technologies is still the same kind of decision-making kind of dilemmas, right? And the, the still the same questions, um, same considerations. Um, human beings are making choices about AR, VR, and what to have for dinner using the same mechanisms in their brains and being constrained by the same influences. So as much as you are empowered with the knowledge of how people should make optimal decisions and what goes wrong when, um, when they don't, then you can then just sort of, it's, it's um, transferable. You can apply it to a bunch of different scenarios um, and AR and VR are, are not excluded. Does that's that great. help answer that? Yeah, that's super helpful. Yeah, both of you, that was really great to add that for the context. Um, Amy, thanks for your responses. Um, I was also wondering if you needed to have taken communication courses during your prior educational experiences. Absolutely not. In fact, this is something we pride ourselves upon both within the graduate program and just with a certificate as well. Um, we're looking for as much, frankly, professional diversity as possible. Um, for those even applying to the graduate program, we don't require necessarily for you to be a communications professional or you have any background in storytelling or content creation. We, I, you know, we believe that communication is all pervasive right now. And whether you are an engineer or you're a, a, a faith leader within an organization, that all this stuff really matters at that level. It's omnipresent. And so to have anybody who at least, uh, you have to have an undergraduate degree clearly, but to have a, a passion and an interest in this kind of uh, professional uh, decision making and focus right now is what matters most. And, you know, it's even better for you to be bringing a non communication background to this conversation because it might have us learn what you care about most. Because ultimately it is communication, but we really see this as it, the, the title of the certificate starts with leadership. And this is about leadership and it transcends just communicating. But to me, leadership today has to always have a communication component to it. So um, you, you don't miss out one way or the other, whether you've had it in your past or whether you get it uh, right now with by pursuing this particular certificate with us. Oh, and Paige, nice to see you. Oh, Paige direct message me. I've known Paige for a while and it's nice to see her. Um, so yeah, so, um, it looks like um, I, I'm just looking for any other questions. I just want to stress that all three of these classes are intended to be graduate style classes in terms of the size and the dynamic nature of the conversation and the sense of collaboration that we have, but also meant to be highly relevant for what's going on right now in terms of what you will learn. I always prided myself that this program students would say they'd come to class one day and then they go back to their jobs the next and whatever they learn in class, they can apply immediately to their jobs. And I think this certificate and what you'll be learning in these three classes will allow you to do exactly that, that it will be that relevant, that topical, and that, uh, and that, that actionable, while still having an evergreen universal notion to it that you can apply three years or five years from now in terms of the methodology of, 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 of what we're doing. And I'm just going to take a little pause now. Um, I think we've actually covered some pretty good questions that get to the nuts and bolts of the program and what's unique about it. And, you know, this inaugural class that we're doing, you get to claim founder status with this certificate. Um, we've, we've created so many other things in this program over the years that have um, become normal, but we were the first to really explore social media, storytelling, a lot of the things that now are in every university around the world began with our program. And we believe that we're leading on this as well in terms of thinking about what does that next generation of leaders need to be? How do they make decisions smartly? And what stories do they tell to create these new institutions that we're gonna need for a very different reality from what we've had um, uh, pre-pandemic?
Okay, well, I think I think we've done a pretty good job. I'm going to put my email address in the chat if anybody wants to reach out to me directly to um, ask any questions specifically that I can respond to. Also knowing that this video will be made uh, available publicly uh, once we're done with it, but maybe I'll just, I'd like to give the last words to my, my dear friends and colleagues who help, we, frankly, this has been almost three years of work from both all three of us to, to think about this and understand what goes into it. And it, it has changed, especially in the last year and a half, as we said, it couldn't just be about technology, but it had to take into account all the other things that were happening because they are all tied together. And so, Nika, as you think about who you are as a professional and as a researcher and as an educator, um, what's the thing that you are most focused on moving forward or most excited about uh, as you as the next as the months unfold and and we return to some semblance of normality? I hope my answer can be big because my answer feels big. I feel like I feel like we are as a human species in a very challenging point in our history. And I really do think that we are here, good and bad, because of choices that we made or people before us made. And I think that you are in a really great position to make choices differently um, that can really shape the future. And that's that's really where my heart is now in, in pretty much everything my work is 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 going towards. And um, and that's the kind of spirit I'd love to take into this class and I'd love the students to have and um, for us to really think about the power that we have to really change things just by making better choices. That's really well said. I love big answers. I, I think it's 60,000 feet. So anything that's epic like that is great. Sarah, you work, you know, your work is just so impactful. You work with incredibly impactful organizations, very major, well-recognized organizations. What are you uh, most excited about or most focused on right now for yourself? Well, I would echo what Nika said. I mean, we are at this turning point. Um, and I am really excited about the opportunity that is provided by emerging technology. One of the things I'm working on over here in, in Germany um, and in Europe is, is syncing standards um, in terms of cybersecurity and, and early warning. And so that's something really exciting to, to look at how we can work together across countries to ensure that we are um, protecting our populations and our critical infrastructure. But at the same time, um, I do believe that each one of us has a role to play. And so the exciting thing about this class and the exciting thing about bringing this University of Washington is that each student and each faculty member actually has the chance to be an advocate for the ethical use of technology. And that is um, something that you should never downplay. If each of us has a megaphone and each of us is a citizen, and each of us needs to take our rights as a citizen seriously to be able to say from the creation of this technology to its use, um, we are willing to do that in an ethical way and not just willing, but also committed. I can't think of a more profound, thoughtful call to action and, and way to end this, this, this conversation, this information session. I don't see any further questions. So I think I will bring it to a close, but know that we are available for further questions. My attitude about this is that we are looking for a select few who are motivated and feel like this is a great fit for them. We're not looking for a lot of people, we're looking for the right people. And we are willing to have those conversations with you to, to see whether that makes sense to you along the way. Because what we're trying to do, I think is special, but timely. And uh, my experience teaching this class with my students this quarter just really made me feel like this is exactly the thing to do right now. And I'm lucky to have them and they're part of that next generation who will lead more appropriately. And I hope that uh, maybe you will be joining us as well this fall. And so please do reach out to us if you'd like to find out more, let us explore your fit. And thank you for your great participation, all of you, and for your kind words. And Nika and Sarah, it's just, um, it's my honor to collaborate with you on this. And thank you for sticking with me throughout everything and for going through all these challenges and knowing that we're doing the right thing. And to be able to have you as my collaborators, I can't think of a better, a better triumvirate to, to bring this to the world. So thank you for that. All right, well that I'm gonna close and thank you all for joining us. This video will be available and we look forward to hearing from you more and uh, have a great day wherever you are in this world and be well and be safe.